after seeing this video you'll be able to conceptualize about a microcontroller you'll be able to have some idea about what a microcontroller is but before we start let me tell you often in this uh, video series I'll be using uh, mu C for microcontroller this mu being used for the word micro okay so let's begin a microcontroller is very similar to a computer I'm sure you must have all seen and used a computer before let me draw a rough sketch of a computer here uh, this is your monitor computer monitor this is an old traditional desktop type computer this is your keyboard not very good in drawing so you have to use a bit of your imagination here this is your CPU with some slots in them and most computers now also have a mouse okay let me label these so this is your CPU this is your monitor this is your keyboard and this is your mouse now what is the most important part of this whole setup what is the most important part of a computer the most important part of a computer is this CPU which is also called the brain of the computer why is it called the brain of the computer because it houses the most important part in a computer which is its processor okay. this processor performs all the arithmetic and logical functions in a computer means all the calculations all the algorithms that have, be, have to be performed are performed here in the processor in addition uh, your CPU also contains some other features some other things like memory memory in the form of RAM and ROM I'm sure you're familiar with these terms before uh, and also has some other peripherals your CPU has also some other peripherals so all this plays the most important part in a computer that's why the CPU is called the brain of the computer and to this CPU you can connect other input and output devices for example keyboard is an input device you can connect it to your CPU so once you connect a keyboard to the CPU uh, all the keyboard presses all the key presses can be detected by your computer you can connect other input devices like mouse mouse is an input device once you connect a mouse to your CPU it can uh, detect the left click right click scroll and so on you can also connect output devices to your CPU like a monitor once you connect a monitor to your computer you can display whatever you want on this monitor okay so you can you can connect other output devices like printer to the CPU you can connect other input devices like joysticks and so on so these are your input device which you can connect and this is your output device okay now a microcontroller is very similar to a computer a microcontroller is basically a small IC chip IC which is also called a chip okay so this is your microcontroller chip or an IC okay uh, the number of pins in this IC can vary from anywhere starting from 8 pins to 8 pins to more than 40 pins okay and the microcontroller is very similar to a computer it also has a processor inside it which can perform arithmetic and logical functions it also has some memory element inside it in the form of RAM and ROM very similar to what we saw in the computer it also has other peripherals inside it which we will be talking about later in our course of study other peripherals what is most important you can also connect input devices to your you can connect input devices to your microcontroller and you can also connect output devices to your microcontroller okay you can connect input devices like sensors 
let's say a temperature sensor or a humidity sensor or a, a fire sensor, smoke sensor and so on. You connect output devices like motors, uh, LEDs and so on. Motors, LEDs and so on. Okay, so as you can see, a uh, microcontroller is very similar to what we saw in the computer before. So what's the difference between them? What's the difference? What's the difference between them? The difference is a computer, this computer can perform several functions inside it, inside them. For example, right now I'm using a computer and I'm using this MyPaint software for sketching this, this, uh, this, this lecture. At the same time, I have in my computer, I have a VLC stream running going on which is recording my desktop. And at the same time, I have an Audacity software running which is uh, recording my voice. So all these different functions, you see this, 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 this is related to video processing, this is related to sound processing, this is related to, uh, this, this software is related for graphics. All these are different works that can be done in a computer. In addition to this, you can uh, do several things in the computer. You can you can draw, uh, you can use a browser. Uh, you see, there is time getting displayed here uh, in the computer. So all these are happening at the same time. On the other hand, in a microcontroller, microcontrollers, uh, everything is very limited in size, very limited in capability. The processor is limited in capability processor is limited in capability, uh, the memory is limited in capability and other peripherals are also limited in their sizes and capability. So a microcontroller can perform very small and dedicated tasks. Small dedicated tasks. What do you mean by small and dedicated tasks? That means it, may, it, means it can only perform one type of task, one type of function all the time. Okay. Uh, I like to give an example where a microcontroller is used. Uh, I'll just give an example. Uh, you must have seen, you must have seen a digital watch. Uh, I'm just drawing a rough sketch of a digital watch, which displays your time in digits. Those kind of watches run using a microcontroller, and the microcontroller has got only one task just to keep record of the time. That's all. It doesn't need to do video processing. It doesn't need to do audio processing. So only one type of task is run by this microcontroller. And these kind of places are where microcontrollers are used to perform only one small dedicated tasks because they're, because the size of their processor, because the size of their memory, because the size of their other peripherals are limited. Similarly, microcontrollers are nowadays used in almost all types of devices, your refrigerators, your uh, your freeze, fridges, uh, uh, almost anything that you can think of, remote controls, all, all of these things run a microcontroller. I hope uh, you can abstractly conceptualize our microcontroller now. That was the purpose of this video. And in the next video, in the next video, we'll be continuing uh, to with this lecture series and our next video will concentrate on to take a peek inside a microcontroller to see one of the major developments in modern technological manufacturing is the growing importance of miniaturizing electronic components advances in microtechnology is necessary to incorporate increasingly more powerful integrated systems into everyday personal devices as microtechnology continues to evolve, it's essential to understand the differences between traditional computing devices and the computing technology used in modern devices. To meet the need to reduce the form factor of everyday computing devices, ongoing engineering advances have enabled the development of powerful microcomputer systems. These self-contained integrated circuits that function as powerful compact computers are referred to as microcontrollers. Microcontrollers come in all sizes so they can be embedded into the electronic systems of automobiles, smartphones, 
tablet devices, and a variety of home appliances. A microcontroller is basically a mini computer. However, whereas a PC can perform a variety of tasks simultaneously, a microcontroller is typically dedicated to a single task. Let's look at the similarities that exist between a PC and a microcontroller. Each has a central processing unit, or CPU. This is the brains of the computer that performs all the calculations and logic operations. The microcontroller also has memory similar to the RAM and hard drive of a PC. The memory of a microcontroller, like that of a PC, stores commands that can be used when needed to perform a specific function or task. A clocking function is also present in a microcontroller to control the speed at which computer processing is carried out. An oscillator is employed to perform this clocking function. The clocking function impacts how the microcontroller performs under various operational modes. Finally, a PC has peripherals that serve to input information using a mouse or keyboard or to display the output of the system using a monitor. Microcontrollers also receive input from peripherals and send output to peripherals via the pins attached to its body. Although physically they may look the same, microcontrollers should not be confused with another similar piece of microtechnology, the microprocessor. Both have powerful processing capabilities. However, while the microprocessor has digital processing functionality, it does not have the same built-in capabilities of a microcontroller. A microprocessor only integrates a central processing unit onto a single microchip, whereas a microcontroller incorporates the components of an entire computer. In general, microprocessors are used to perform a wide range of computing operations, while a microcontroller, with its all-in-one design, performs specialized tasks required for devices such as a smartphone.